But yeah, uh, let's talk gaming news. I don't have a jingle for this yet, so. Ring a ding ding. Ring a ring a ding 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 dang dong. Uh, <laughs> I think first up, um, you want to talk about this controller thing with Xbox? Sure, yeah, let's knock that out. So this happened uh, around Halloween. Um, I believe it was like the, the 29th or so. Uh, previously, um, accessories for the, the current Xbox consoles, as long as they were, like, protocol compatible, you could get them to work. Uh, it, you know, it was just very easy process of just syncing it like, you know, like any other controller. Uh, Microsoft has rolled out a whitelist of hardware IDs, essentially, and really what it is is they've restricted third-party controllers out entirely, uh, I'm sure there's going to be. Uh, oh, never mind. It, it, it says right here. Does uh, they have to meet their design for Xbox partner hardware program? Which means it's just the classic Microsoft thing of first restrict the thing and then like uh, attack on licensing fees or uh, like administrative fees to get like the compatibility back. Um, so I'm sure that like this is a monetary move. I saw a lot of people on like uh, Reddit and stuff saying, oh, the reason they're doing this is because people are cheating with mouse and keyboard controllers. I don't think that's why they did this. Uh, mostly because that's been a thing you could do since the PlayStation 2. Like they, they hell, even the PlayStation 1 had the PlayStation mouse, not that it was compatible with every game, but as far as like third party controllers that emulate keyboard and mouse, uh, on a console that you could get those for the PlayStation 2 on up. They wouldn't have addressed it with that with this move now. I think it's a very strange move to do, especially given how far into the lifespan of these consoles we're in. Uh, and I think I really think the only reason is just monetary. I mean, they did just acquire Activision that had to have blown a hole in the wall in a bit. Um, and also, the main thing that people are angry about is that every third-party controller for disabled gamers that was made for that thing now doesn't work, aside from the one that Microsoft themselves sell, which was like 200 bucks. Yeah. And that's real gross to me. Uh, they haven't really said any, but like, they haven't really said anything about, like, remedying that, uh, other than please reach out to the disability answer desk. You're gonna um, have to like. Is this only on Xbox? Yeah, this is not. This isn't the okay. PC move. If this were a PC okay. move, that would be insane. Yeah, uh, but no, this is only on Xbox console. Uh, and you'll get an error message that says a connected accessory is not authorized. If 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 you're seeing that, uh, that means that uh, you know, you're screwed until like either the company who made the thing finds a way around this, and they will. Uh, at least the bigger ones. And they update their stuff, they pony up for getting their stuff on the console, or you're just up shit creek. Uh, one of the people, uh, one of the groups this also screws over is people in the fighting game community who are using, like, rook boards or other compatibility boards to make their old fight sticks work with the newer consoles. I think in that case, Brook's probably just going to do what, like, a lot of hard I, I'd imagine a lot of hardware manufacturers are going to do unless there's some like software reason for blocking it, but I'm pretty sure it's just a Mac address whitelist, so they're just gonna spoof the address of a valid controller. Or at least that's yeah. what I'd do. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't give them any money to uh you know, they're they're essentially holding your market hostage at this point. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I mean yeah, yeah I'm not I, I, I don't see how anybody could be like a fan of this move in particular. I don't, th I mean, I feel like there's gotta be some other reason why they do this. Cause they, they can't, this couldn't have been something they'd be like, Oh, people aren't, aren't going to care that much or whatever. You know what I mean? Like it's a, it's kind of a big deal in my opinion. Yeah. I don't, I don't get the move either. Uh, but you know, it's Microsoft. They don't exactly make moves that make sense from anything other than a blatant cash grab standpoint. Uh, quite a bit over their history. 
And this is just another instance of them flexing the fact that they have a de facto monopoly on this sector of the gaming sphere. You know, they, and granted, of course, their console's under their purview. Uh, whether or not it should be is an argument best left up to people like Cory Doctorow, who are all about interoperability protocols. I personally think that you should be able to plug whatever controller you want into there because, like, nothing's going to give you a win button. Like... And even yeah. mouse and keyboard play, like, if through an emulated controller setup, isn't, like, 100%. You're still translating the input to a controller, and you have to deal with, unless the game, like, the game in question allows you to disable it, you still have to deal with the fact that there's stuff like auto-aim compensation and things that are done to make aiming on a controller feel better. Uh, that you're literally having to work against now using a mouse and keyboard setup. I also just don't think that, like, I don't think the market penetration for those consoles is anywhere near what those people on Reddit were alleging. Like, I think that's a great fig leaf uh, for, like, Microsoft to use uh, as a justification for this, but they, I haven't seen them do that. I've just seen people say it, so... I don't know where that's coming from, aside from people trying to grasp for a reason that isn't just money, but it's fucking money. And this is why I don't think them getting all of these game companies under their belt is a good thing, because they've already announced that, like, the price of Game Pass is going to go up. It's being lost led right now. And I'm sure that the feet, like the amount of games that you get or their timing is also going to change to make it a less attractive option once it's the only option on the table or an, a close enough to the only option on the table where uh, they're still going to have their audience basically stuck in their ecosystem, but it's not going to be a situation where they can, say, get brought up on a giant antitrust lawsuit. You know, a thing that totally hasn't happened before to them, but, uh, yeah, this also screw like, this, this article's pointing out, it also screws up older racing wheels and shit, because uh, I don't know how many of these brands were informed of the change. Uh, so you might be waiting for a firmware update or a console whitelist update, or you might just be shit out of luck if you have, uh, something that is, especially if it's a controller that's made by a company that went out of business, like, there might literally be nobody to uh, do that process of getting it back onto the console. Yeah, I know what you mean. But anyway, that's what's going on with the with the consoles um, or with the uh, controllers on a uh, Xbox. It's just it's real weird. It also coincides with the launch of uh, the first official third party wireless controllers that aren't just like uh, either scuff uh, making their stuff to like due to like a patent agreement that they have with Microsoft or uh, just a reskinned Xbox controller. Um, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we should move on to the next thing. The, um, kind of big news since the last time we talked, uh, was definitely pro I would probably say the steam deck OLED release. Um, yeah, so we're getting a new steam deck. That's an OLED. It's got a little bit, they, 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 uh, made the bezels smaller. Uh, so it's a 7.4 inch screen. Looks about the same size to me as the original Steam Deck. Um, the huge addition here, I think, is the fact that it is compatible with HDR. And on a handheld device, I think that's a first. Yeah, I can't ever. think of one otherwise. And I've seen some stuff online. I, I've seen like comparisons between the original Steam Deck and then the OLED with uh hdr and it's crazy how good this thing looks oh my god like <laughs> this is an insane handheld device not to mention that they put a better battery in there so you get i mean by the sounds of it you get you know probably yeah, like 20 percent like an extra yeah an extra 20 percent or so um yeah I watched a cool uh, teardown that Gamers Nexus did uh, of the two models. They just had all the parts lined up side by side. The amount of internal changes on this thing is staggering. It's a completely, it's a completely new uh, manufacturing process. It's like a, 
I can't remember the exact size of the manufacturing process, but it went down a couple nanometers, which means that the APU that's powering the whole thing can be smaller. It got rotated uh, within the, the board so that they can utilize like uh, smaller, higher density memory chips uh, as opposed to the ones that they were using. This allowed them to like not only expand the battery size, but they also redesigned the cooling setup to uh, work more effectively while also uh, getting rid of some of the like four kilohertz tones uh, that uh, were being put out by the device that like that that is very offensive to some people's ears. So it should be a quieter setup as well. They actually flipped the fan entirely, which is if you know anything about how cooling's designed, they would have had to redesign basically the entire like cooling setup just by like the just based on the fact that they did that. Um. And yeah, of course, like the screens for repairs is easier to access than uh, the previous model. You don't have to like take apart the entire backplate anymore to get to it. Uh, it's apparently just pretty simple. Like it splits in half and then you can get to it pretty easily from there if you need a replacement. Um, they have reinforced uh, some of the like the triggers uh, and like the, the, the shock mounts of the touchpads that they should be more robust and like more uh, resistant to being dropped or mishandled. And yeah, it's all in a package that seems to have the exact same dimensions as the original. Uh, they have mitigated the parts that were having heat issues uh, and, and heat issues to failure in some cases. So these should be all, overall a more robust, nicer evolution of the Steam Deck. I don't know... Aside from, like, uh, HDR support, I don't know if it's bringing a ton to the table for people who already have one, but for people who are in the market for one, definitely get the OLED. Yeah, I haven't got one yet, and, yeah, this this kind of... Very intriguing to me, because I've, I've really wanted a Steam Deck, and I remember when it launched, I was like, oh, I'm going to get one, I'm definitely going to get one, but then they were, like, impossible to get for a really long time. Uh, and then I was... Yeah, I was like, oh, well, you know, maybe I'll get one if they make, you know, a second one or something like that or a new one. It doesn't sound, you know, I think they came out and said, we're not making like a Steam Deck 2 anytime soon. Um, but this OLED with HDR release is great. Like, this is a pretty big upgrade. I mean, just OLED anything is great, right? I mean, the switch, yeah. the regular switch to the OLED switch is night and day. And in terms of just how much pop and quality of the handheld screen that's there, it's just incredible. So this is going to be a huge upgrade for people that don't have a Steam Deck that were like, oh, I was going to get a Steam Deck. I want a Steam Deck. Haven't got one yet. This OLED one is definitely the way to go. It's 550, I think. Is that the is that how much I think that's how much the base OLED model is. And I think there's another one with like more storage that is a little bit more a little bit more pricey but i don't know what the price is on that one uh yeah no, it definitely is it definitely seems like a a really awesome upgrade for a thing that was already pretty cool i don't have a steam deck myself i i don't have a use case to justify it because honestly like i work from home i don't use public transportation much so in the event that i am going on a long trip i'm i'm like there there just isn't really the public transportation around here that i would use the steam deck on you know i'm driving and i'm not crazy so i'm not going to use the steam deck while i'm driving and drive with my feet right. or something uh yeah. but yeah, yeah it, 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 like the of the friends that i know who have one uh the original like they really really like it so I wonder how many of them are going to want to upgrade to an OLED. Yeah. I mean, that screen does look really good. Yeah, uh, the, one, the of the one of the bigger downgrade. One of the bigger complaints of down... their Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. I was just going to say real quick, the one of the biggest complaints was the battery life of the original Steam Deck. Um so seeing that it has a better battery is is like another is another Pretty big plus, I think. Oh, yeah. But yeah, overall, uh, that was pretty cool. Um, was there another news item that we had, I believe? There was indeed. 
and it is the live action Zelda movie. Oh, yeah. That was announced. <laughs> so Nintendo did really well with the Mario movie. It was everywhere. I went to go see it in the theater, me and the fam. Uh, we all enjoyed it. It's a good time. You know, I've I've actually seen it a few times. I love the movie. I think it's great. Um, it's not live action, so I think that helps it a bit. But there is a new Zelda movie coming out that's live action, and you know, I I just don't want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see. I don't want to see them do this. I don't want to, and maybe I'm not giving them the benefit of the doubt. Nintendo is going to be heavily involved. It's their IP. They're they're going to be so very careful with how this is actually done, who plays who, and how the story is, you know, um, executed. But I just don't think that like a live action Zelda game or like the live action Zelda movie is an amazing idea in my opinion like who's gonna play link who's gonna play zelda all right and they should like all these people are talking about like grown ass people um to play these characters and i'm like th- these should be like kind of younger you know what i mean like teenagers or something right like the like yeah. i don't know i i feel, I feel like, like i like, have timothy chalamet do it i feel like they're yeah i feel people like people are talking about list. They're talking about Tom Holland um, no, as Link, uh, and I do think he's a little too old, right? And he's also not pretty enough to put to like, play Link. Yeah, Link is very, very like like a very, very pretty boy. He's a very- <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. He is like you see. Yeah, him. yeah, yeah. So I, I just don't. You know, and then the whole Ganon and, you know, what storyline do they use? And and I don't know, man. I just, I can't see it being executed in a great way. I, I feel like there's going to be backlash um, on every decision they make, right? From, you know, Zelda fans are pretty intense, you know. And they're going to announce who Link is and who Zelda is. And I just feel like there's going to be discourse around it and hey, i'm sure i'm not i'm not the hugest fan of the idea but to nintendo's credit i should give them the benefit of the doubt since they did well with the mario movie right jack black as yeah. bowser totally killed it you know what i mean it uh charlie day with luigi totally killed it it was great it was a great movie it was fun wasn't too crazy it didn't go like all out and do a bunch of weird shit. They they kind of straight stayed true to like, you know, it felt very Mario. Uh, and so, you know, maybe they do that here. Maybe they do. Maybe they do it right. You know. Um, yeah, I feel or, like that is uh, kind of a case of like the thing about Mario is that like it has a defined universe and cast of characters. But as far as like storylines go, you could have done anything with that movie and people would have been like, whatever. You could have done the yeah. exact remake of the 80s movie just with, like, more accurate Nintendo graphics, and uh, people would have been like, oh, yeah, cool, but, like, like there there isn't the contingent of people who took Mario seriously in the way that the people are going to take a Zelda movie seriously, like you were saying. And any decisions they make, even if they stay, like, if their decisions, depending on the game that they look at, or if they mix and match, like, people are going to nitpick it to death, um any costuming decisions are going to be very difficult like yes. this and it like making it live action it, it, the the it's hurdle the of believability move. that you need to get past now is way higher than if it were just a cg movie uh and also you said like you were telling me earlier that they had the maze runner guy lined up for this yeah the director of maze runner seems yeah. to be the guy um yeah so i don't know I don't know how well this is going to go. So we'll we'll see. I'm excited yeah. to get more information on who's playing who, what the storyline's going to be, you know, what kind of like timeline are we looking at? You know, is this you know, what's the setting going to be like? It's just there's so much that they could do here. I just wish it wasn't live action. 
Like, I'm, I'm not opposed to a Zelda movie. Just kind of, I just wish it wasn't live action, personally. Yeah, I don't know. It's 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 a real odd choice. I feel, I do feel like it is an attempt at, for Nintendo at expanding, like, beyond, uh, like, you know, beyond their four kids, uh, um, like, you know, roots or perception that people have about Nintendo properties. But hell, I feel like doing a Metroid movie first would have been easier. <laughs> like, I know yeah, that Zelda's like the next thing that's not because Pokemon's had 16,000 movies at this point. Uh, so I know like doing Zelda was probably the next thing on the list, but like, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be hard. And like, I, I'd say I'd wait for a trailer, but even trailers can be deceptive. That latest Mortal Kombat movie had a really, really good trailer because it was essentially the first 15 minutes of the movie that they filmed after the rest of it, I have a feeling. And then once they smash cut to, like, you know, uh, from, from ancient feudal Japan to modern day, the movie just goes to hell. So I'm not saying they're going to do a Beastmaster 2 with Zelda. At least I hope not. Like, that, I better not see Link walking around L.A. or anything. Yeah, but, uh, that's not, I don't think that's going to happen. No, it's not going to be like the He-Man movie or anything. It's not going to be like that egregious, but uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, but yeah, I think that was the last item on the news desk here. So time to talk about other stuff. Other stuff.